the webinar about sales dashboards, that makes sense. Um, so over the next 20, 30 minutes, we'll go through uh, some of the top challenges we see our customers having in, in sales reporting. Um, very briefly on the most common KPIs we see in, in sales. And then we're gonna introduce our, our sales dashboards package that we've launched quite recently and how we tackle some of these challenges in sales reporting that we see. And for, for everyone sticking around, I'm happy to say we have a special offer for our participants as well coming up. Uh, we'll dive right into the, um, to the presentation then and start with the, the number one challenge we see in sales reporting today, and that's basically bad data. Um, so poor data quality is still causing a lot of headache for a lot of companies and customers that we see out in the marketplace. Um, the, the main cause of this is human errors and manual entry of data. Uh, it's not, not to blame the salespeople particularly. Often the CRM systems are quite complex. Navigation might be, might be difficult in that sense. Uh, there might also be a, you know, quite high demands on salespeople to be very meticulous in their and granular in what they need to fill in, which causes delay and, and difficulties in, or it's easy to make errors when entering data into the CRM system. Um, other causes of this that we see a lot is data migration or conversion projects. So combining data from different data sources and then the formats are, are off and such. So, so this causes a lot of headache for a lot of people as well, um, or companies, I should say. Uh, last but not least, we have the, a bit of a lack of having a data-driven culture in the, in the organization still. So, so um, companies and managers and decision makers still tend to act a lot based on intuition or experience still, uh, rather than trusting the data fully out. And, and when there's no trust in, in the data as such, then, then that trickles down into the organization as well that um, perhaps reporting the data isn't that important as well. So uh, these are some of the causes we see uh, for poor data quality around in companies. The number two challenge we see is, is there's a lot of truths inside one single company about what data can we actually, what should we follow? What are the most important KPIs that we, that we need to follow in our company and, and what kind of filters do different reports have? So um, there's typically a lack of clarity around which are the most important key performance indicators in a specific company or in a specific unit. Uh, often we see that our customers might have, you know, up to a hundred different sales report in their CRM uh, reporting system. So you can choose you know, too many reports there. And, and it's very difficult to spot the difference between, let's say, one report to another. They are by name explaining the same thing, but one might have a filter that, that the other doesn't. So which report can you actually trust out of those two? Um, that also leads to some clarity on what data, what reports should we actually be looking at. Last but not least, we have data manipulation. And I, I don't mean manipulation in a malintent sort of way that, that people are lying. But uh, when you have the unclarity of which KPIs to follow and which reports are the most important, then it also becomes easy for people to create their own favorite reports. Um, and, and once the, the library of different reports starts to grow and people are modifying their own reports, uh, they add filter and manipulate the data to see what they want to see, uh, something that explains something better for them. And, and again, that means that uh, the, 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 the data in its raw form uh, is, is kind of forgotten or lost inside of the library of full data. So you have a lot of different reports in the same company and it's hard to know what to actually follow. The number three challenge uh, we see is something that many companies bring bring on to themselves. They want to measure something really complicated and cool, uh, but they actually might not have the data to support that kind of metric. So uh, the ambition level of a lot of companies is quite high and they create these uh, pretty sophisticated metrics that they use, but um, only a few people actually understand the KPIs. Uh, so this means that the if people don't understand what they are looking at, um, 
it's also going to lead to them not actually putting in the data. The, the value of putting in the data is maybe perhaps not understood across the organization so much. Um, also, when you want very complex metrics, it typically leads to a lot of data input needed as well. Um, so this might be difficult to for salespeople to actually you know, uh, fill in that much data while they're out selling. And the best practice in this case is actually to a good KPI are easy to measure. Uh, they're understandable for the whole organization and also actionable. The number four challenge we see is uh, about the reporting frequency. And uh, still, in most cases, information is not available when needed. And, and a lot of companies are spending a lot of time um, uh, preparing reports. Um, uh, I think this is a lot based on our tradition of actually having these daily or weekly or monthly sales meetings. And, and people are expecting a narrative around the sales figures, uh, a story behind the numbers. This might not actually be needed anymore. And if people and companies trust the data, uh, they can e easily access the, the data and the dashboard, the sales report, anytime, anywhere, just trusting the figures. Last but not least, we'll only go through five challenges today, but it's, it's the trust in the data. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of companies are not fully there yet when it comes to, to acting on data and not uh, acting on their intuition or experience. Um, this is sometimes brought on by, by in the past, data has been inconsistent, incomplete or inaccurate. Um, and so it's hard to overcome the barrier of actually fully trusting the data that we see. Um, another thing that might spur you know, uh, bad behavior in this sense is, is when when only results matter, so encouraging that as long as you bring in the, the sales numbers by the end of the month, you don't need to bother with the input of data. And this is a risky business as well, uh, and it might be quite short-sighted, but, but that's a kind of common behavior still uh, in the companies. Um, so best practice here is really to share data and KPIs, and, and uh, company management really needs to lead by examples from the top and, and, and showing that they're acting and using the data that, that is being reported. Um, swiftly going over to some of the kind of main top KPIs that we see that almost all companies that we work with that at their Lucy use. Uh, and these are quite basic and I think none of them will be unfamiliar to you. So it's the one deals, here we show it by the value of all one deals. Here it's shown on, a, on an annual chart um, showing the progression over the year. And there's a line also here behind uh, allowing companies to, to compare the results uh, to last year's performance, for example. Um, sales forecast is always uh, on the top of the list of wishes. Um, in this case, and we'll go through this in a bit more detail later, but in this case, we can see we're using the uh, value of all one deals up to date, but then also adding the, uh, the weighted pipeline on top of that. So we take the uh, probability stages uh, times the amount of expected uh, open opportunities, and that gives you a very quite accurate sale forecast based on your current data. We have the pipeline uh, also, just like the sale forecast, it's a future-oriented KPI allowing you to, to see uh, where your deals and opportunities are in the funnel. And, and that's something that's typically measured both in value and depending on the industry also, how many, how many actual opportunities are populating the pipeline. Another popular, one is the popular metric is the weighted pipeline, typically by, by person. Uh, so you want to follow up on your sales team and their individual performance. Uh, this is something that's quite common and we see leaderboards and, and these types of things. And for this reason, the weighted pipeline is quite a good way to show how active people are as it kind of uh, shows where in the pipeline the opportunities are for these people and, and whether it will be enough to reach their, their targets at the end of the month. We'll also go through win rate, and this is a metric that has many names and, and a lot of different interpretations on how it should be used. Um, 
Um, the way we do it, which we believe is the more accurate way, at least in my opinion, is that it should be an indicative figure. So, so uh, the, the easy way to do it, but, but also the smart way in, in some sense is to take uh, all, all uh, offers sent out during the year. Uh, so you divide all the one deals this year divided by all the offers sent out this year. So it's an indicative figure that actually gives you what, what is your hit rate on, on any proposal that you sent out. Um, extrapolating that, you can you can also see how many meetings does it take to to send out an offer and such and 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 so on. And and with that, you can then uh, quite easily see what what actions you need to take to to meet your sales targets at the end of the month. Um, I want to explain a little bit further on this that that a lot of companies want to maybe follow a specific deal through the funnel, uh, funnel stage and such. Uh, in in my opinion, that's more related to the win loss analysis type of thing where uh, where you know one deal is evaluated and why it was lost or won so to speak um, now let's go into to the demo uh, that we're here to show and and uh, how we try to solve some of these common challenges that we see in companies and and the type of metrics that we show uh, uh, so we made four ready dashboards in uh, sales dashboards. Um, each one of them is designed for a different type of user. Um, that being said, anyone can access all the four dashboards. Um, we've included these metrics that are measurable, understandable, and actionable, i.e. We, we're not using these overcomplicated metrics, which many companies actually don't have the data to actually fulfill these types of metrics. Um, our dashboards are easy to share and available anytime, anywhere. It's, it's a cloud service. And um, one of the key things that I think separates us from a lot of our competitors and other dashboards out there that, that our dashboards are designed for decision makers and not the analysts. They should be easy to understand and easy to act on for everyone. And um, where we're going with this sales package that we have is that we hope that these dashboards fit uh, meet about 90% uh, of, of companies needs when it comes to sales reporting. Uh, we do offer a customization on top of, uh, of these dashboards um, and there's more things to do there, but I'll come back to that a little bit later. So I'll now uh, go into the demo, which is live. Just gonna change, share my screen here and hopefully it will work fine. All right, um, I'm going to move a bit slowly here so to make sure that, that uh, what you see is the same as I see. But you see here that first, before going into the, the details of the board, I want to show the, the structure of this sales package. So as you can see down here in the bottom, we have four different uh, dashboards. There's one for sales management group. There's one, two dashboards for the sales team. And then there's an info screen, which is designed to be on TV lobbies, uh, TV screens in the lobby and these types of things. Um, uh, they all have a different user group and a bit of a different purpose. The, the sales management group dashboard is meant to quickly give you an overview of where the company is today in terms of sales and where it is going to be, uh, both in the short term, but also in the long term future. So it has a lot of charts there with trend lines and, and goals and these types of things designed to give you a quick overview of what we're doing. There's also some of these uh, short term expectations, for example, largest offers expected to close this month. Um, as explained previously, we have the uh, one this year, here we have the forecast, we have the goal line here. Um, I'll go into a little bit about the goals uh, later on as well. Uh, we can see also the traffic lights here uh, showing green that we've met our target for, for this month. The two uh, consequent dashboards, there's two for the sales team, so they contain a bit more granular data. Uh, the first one is focusing on the pipeline. Uh, how it is going, what are the most recent deals, um, what are we expecting to win uh, over the next 30 days, and these types of things. The third dashboard is then more focused on the team. So here you have the 
leaderboards, the top 10 salespeople, weighted pipelines. Uh, what are we expecting from each person going forward over the next month? The sales info screen, it actually has a video running in the background. I'm not sure how well the streaming will go via the web service, but, but on my screen it is running smoothly. So this is the type of thing that you can have for everyone in the company to see. So to give an accurate overview, how is our company doing in terms of sales for all employees? Because we believe in sharing of data uh, as much as possible uh, in the back. I'll go back to the first, first dashboard uh, again um, and uh, talk a little bit about how it is to, to work with the dashboard. Um, uh, there are three things I'm going to mention. We, there's tons of things to do in the dashboards, but there's only time for three things now. And I'll go through what we call drill downs. And uh, I'll also go through the goal setting features in the, in the dashboard. And last but not least, these uh, drop down dimensions that you can also add. So let's start with the drill down. So every metric on the dashboards that you've seen has, has a drill down. So if I click on uh, current offer base, for example, you can see that immediately all the data that is represented behind that main figure comes up in a table. Um, and you can easily also sort sort by different columns if you want to see the, uh, the data in a different format. And you can export this as a CSV file also if you want to analyze the data further. If I press on another widget, you can see you still have a drill down here as well. But apart from the table of all the uh, deals one this month, I can also press on the chart here and it shows me the trend over the year. So all of our charts has drilled down and you can also go granular and see the data behind the main figures. Uh, and this is why this tool is also really useful in, in uh, meetings and such and sales reporting because there will always be questions on what is what is making up maze figures, for example, and, and there you have the answer and you can just click on the chart. Uh, I'll then go through the goal editor. So you can see here that uh, we've added goals for two of these metrics, one this month and the current offer base. We just hit our goal here for, for the offer base this year. So Dear Lucy Dashboards comes with a, a smart and advanced goal editor. Um, you can easily set these traffic lights and such, uh, but you can do tons of more also. You can also, uh, for example, if you have an annual goal, you can set the target and the traffic light to measure whether you're on track to meet the uh, target or not on the, on the given day where you're at, um, so that it doesn't show red until the end of the period that you're tracking. You can set them for different time periods and even for different dimensions as well, and different people if that's, uh, what you want to do. One more thing, and I want to show, um, this is part of our customized options, but, but uh, our drop down filters that we have in the top here. So if I want to see sales results for Germany, just waiting for, for the screen to catch up, seems to be some lag. So, and now it works, I'll, I'll go back again. So up here I have the drop down filters and I can select Germany here. And all the figures on the dashboard will then show Germany's figures. Uh, I can also combine that with several, you can have more than two. So if I only wanna see new customer sales in Germany, I can see how many I want for those, for example can also see here, as I showed earlier, that if we do have a specific goal for Germany, that will show up as well. So Germany hasn't met their offer base, whereas on the overall level in this company, we did meet our offer base target, for example. Um, that's basically what we wanted to show. We have these four dashboards. I want to reiterate that there's tons of customizations you can do inside the tool as part of the package as well. You can choose by 11 different uh, theme colors. Uh, you can move and resize widgets as you wish. And obviously if there's sensitive data or something 
you don't want to share with everyone, you can easily manage access rights uh, in the admin section of the tool as well. So if you, for example, don't feel that the, the metrics shown on the sales info screen are for everyone in the company, they can easily be replaced with some of the other metrics we have on the charts as well. Uh, with that said, I'll now go back to the presentation and talk a little bit more about how this works and, and how this setup works, uh, these things. So I will not... um, these dashboards work with a plug and play type of solution for uh, six of the top CRMs uh, uh, globally, so we have, and also in the Nordics, so we have Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive, and, and then perhaps more in the Nordics, Visma, Severa, PlanMill, and, and Lime CRM as well. So these are KPI connectors, and, and it works, you know, almost instantaneous uh, uh, setup, um, and all these metrics will work with that. Uh, we do also support uh, Excel Online or Google Sheets or CSV uh, file transfer. So, so if you have your data in your data, and also databases, of course. So, if you have a database instead, uh, we do support that also. But, uh, but the input of making the dashboard works is perhaps a little bit uh, longer for those systems. Um, I mentioned earlier that we hope that, that these dashboards solve about 90% of the sales reporting needs for most companies, but we do realize that all companies are run differently and uh, there's not going to be any one size fits all when it comes to, to sales reports uh, and dashboards. So we do offer customization on top of this package. For example, these drop down filters, as I showed in the demo earlier, you can also segment your data inside of charts. So that means pie charts and stacked bar charts or lines for different pipelines or what it might be. Uh, that's also very much possible. Uh, we're very happy to support single sign-on if you have that in your company. Uh, we want as many people as possible to, to see the data, of course, and the dashboards. Um, and custom charts, in some cases we have companies that really have a Know, the one chart that they really follow. And if it's not already part of the uh, package as it is today, we're happy to support kind of custom charts and visualizations as well uh, uh, separately. Um, if the uh, 11 themes are not enough for you uh, and the theme colors that we already offer, uh, you can also have your exact brand colors in charts as well. So that's something that can be implemented. And last but not least, uh, in some cases there's now, not all data might be in the CRM system. So if you have additional data in an Excel and you want one or two, two more metrics, but the data is not, not in the CRM system, we can also support that with a quick integration through an MS Excel online or Google Sheet type of solution as well. So, so adding value to the dashboard is in our interest as well. All right. Um, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, you will most likely get uh, or very much get access to the demo and, and this presentation as well. And, and we now have a few minutes for questions, perhaps, uh, if you have any, and, and I'm happy to take those. Um, there's also the two week free trial offered to anyone who joined here. Uh, if you have one of the API connectors that we have as plug and play options. So Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive, Lime, Severa, or Planly. So now if you have any questions to Hans, whether that's uh, regards to KPIs in general or to our um, product demo in particular, then uh, we do have a few minutes to answer those now. And if not, you can obviously also contact us later on at um, support at dearlucy.co and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And we'll be also sending you a, a recording of the webinar a bit later today so you can have a um, you know, look back if there's something that you uh, wanted to have a second look at. And we'll also send you a direct link to the product demo if you'd like to try that out yourself. Just checking whether there are any questions that have come through. Currently, doesn't look like there are any.
No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yare. How do you create the sales forecast? So there was one question that came in. So would you, Hans, want to talk us through quickly how was yeah, that done? Yeah. Uh, so basically what we do is we take uh, all your opportunities in your pipeline and um, they or sales funnel and they will typically have a, a probability stage linked to them um, so and a deal value so we take the deal value uh, multiplied by its probability so if it's in a later stage of the sales funnel then let's say 80 percent likelihood and it's worth 10,000 so then the sales forecast is 8,000 um, then we additionally look at the close date of that opportunity so if you're expecting to close that in june for example then we add 8,000 as a sales forecast to june um, obviously typically there's you know uh, hundreds of opportunities in the pipeline so we do that for all of them and create the sales forecast based on those three uh, values so the, the value uh the probability stage and the expected close date all right i think that were those were all the questions that we had at this moment so unless there are many other questions coming in we would like to thank everybody for joining the webinar it was nice to see so many of you online today and let's stay in touch and have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.